spent all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head And I will sing Of the goodness I love you Lord I love you Lord Good, this is running out, it's running out. 
If you have your Bibles, can you turn to Ephesians chapter 4? Somebody said to me, are you going to give a message based on the Ethiopian eunuch being baptised or the baptism of Jesus or the 3,000 that were baptised in the early church? And I said, none of those is going to be Ephesians chapter 4. This is what it says, the first six or seven verses. As a prisoner... For the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. And I want us just for a few minutes, and it will be a few minutes, just to consider everybody that loves and serves the Lord Jesus Christ is all one in him. And there's a couple of things that I'd like to point out in this passage. Paul, writing here, reminds people that he is a prisoner for the Lord. He's been in prison several times and uh, eventually in Rome we see that, we read that he was imprisoned for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, as a prisoner 
for the Lord. And this is what it's based on. He says that because I'm a prisoner and because of the message I preach and because of the message that you have heard, then I urge you to live a life that is worthy. And I would challenge you, as I challenge myself this morning, am I living a, a life that is worthy? Am I living a life that is worthy of the Lord Jesus Christ? And there's two things that I'd like us to notice in this passage that is a reminder. And it is an encouragement to all of us, not least to those who have been baptised this morning. And this little message will be recorded and they can have it so they will hear it. Um, but it's an ongoing process that we're in. Being baptised isn't the end and it isn't the final part. There is so much more to it. It is a growth. It is a step and it is a milestone. You know, uh, those of you who know me, you know that I re always return back to the idea of memorials, how we read in the Old Testament that people set up memorials. And when they passed that place, they were reminded of a particular event. And we have remote memorials in this country uh, that people have set up as reminders. And they're very important. And in your life and in my life, when you go back, you will find there are things that are major points in our life that are turning points, that are points when things are changed in our lives. And for those of us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and have been baptised, that is one of the milestones. And this morning, five uh, people here of our friends and our family and now a part of the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a milestone and a date that they will always remember. And it's a date that I remember. I was sharing with somebody that uh, I was a 16-year-old and rather blasé at the time. I still am blasé at times, my wife reminds me. Um, but it was a milestone. But what I said to the minister is that I've come to faith, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and I really don't want to go through all these passages and all these bits of readings and I don't want to go through a baptismal course, I just want to be baptised. And I realised a long time later actually that the minister was very gracious because he accepted what I said. I said what I read in, in the New Testament is that the, the message of repentance was preached to the people by John and by the apostles. And when they preached that message of repentance, he says, do you now repent? And as a witness, will you be baptised? I said, and that's what I want. I don't want all the frills. And he was very gracious and he baptised me. Um, and those people that were there in that fellowship at that day helped me through difficult periods and difficult times, through a teenage and, and through my early 20s, and they, and they were alongside me. So what is it that is an expectation of all of us for these five people this morning? Well, the first thing that I'd like you to notice is this. In verse 2, it says this. Be completely humble. There's a tough one for a start, isn't it? And gentle. There's another tough one. Be patient. There's another tough one. Bearing with one another in love. There's an even tougher one. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. So the first thing is, that is a requirement of us as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we want to be like him. And I put this question to you as I put it to myself. Am I like him? You see, outwardly, what the world sees of us is the outward part of the inward change. And if they don't see us like the Lord Jesus Christ, then they don't see the Lord Jesus Christ, the inward change. In uh, Colossians chapter 3, uh, it says this, 
and written in a slightly different way uh, and with a slightly different emphasis. Therefore, as God's chosen people, those of you who love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ, chosen people, holy, do you feel holy? Do you know what holy means? It means to be set apart. It means different from the world. Are you different from the world or are you the same as the world? You know, at the beginning of the lockdown last year, everybody was saying, oh, we need to change. I'm never going to go back to what it was. And as soon as the opportunity arose and freedom was given to people, they went back to exactly where they were. It was the same as the world. But are you set apart? Are you holy? Because, you see, it's all part of the growth and one of the steps of, of being holy and progressing is when we make our commitment in a, in a baptism. And it says this, um, Therefore be holy, dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive of whatever grievances you may have against one another. Now here's something. This is forgiveness. Can you forgive others? How is your state of forgiveness? Do you still bear a grudge against somebody? Because what we're talking about here is unity in the church fellowship. We're talking about the unity and being together as part of God's family and of part of his body. And he says, forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. This is a message of repentance. When we're baptised, we're saying we're sorry and we're coming to the Lord and saying, I really want to be a changed person. I want to be renewed. I want to be made whole. I want to be complete. And it starts with repentance and then forgiveness. And Paul says, but yes, for others to see the Lord Jesus Christ, you've got to forgive others. Whatever the circumstances, whatever the conditions, you cannot be part of the family in its completeness and in its unity without forgiveness. And that goes for anybody and everybody and every situation because that's what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you and I. He has forgiven us. God has forgiven us through the Lord Jesus Christ because he gave him as his son to die for us, to cancel out our sin and say, you are forgiven. So we need to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. And it goes on to say, forgive as the Lord forgave you and over all these virtues, put on love. Forgiveness starts with love. Love for the people around us. Love for one another. Love for this, for this generation and for these people that we see around us. That desire that they come into that relationship of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know that I fall short on so many occasions because I haven't shown the love of the Lord Jesus Christ to those around me. So the first thing is to be like the Lord Jesus. And then the second is this, that it is only one gospel. If, if we look at a, a little bit further, it says um, there is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to one hope last week, Graham Dallison was talking about hope and he pointed out the scripture uh, verses around the walls of uh, our church uh, about hope. When you were called one Lord, one faith and one baptism. That's it. A baptism of repentance and saying, I really want to be forgiven. I want to be part of the family. I want to be part of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be part of his body. Are you part of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you asked for forgiveness? Have you come to the foot of the cross and said, now I understand what Jesus Christ has done for me? The cross is empty. Why? Because he rose again. His body was taken and it was put into a tomb and he conquered death and he conquered death and was risen from the tomb 
that we might have life and that we might have life everlasting. So we come to that point where we say that it is one Lord, one faith, one faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, nothing else, no one else around, no one else can do anything, only the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is that one baptism that changes and that is a step on our road of walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's our step of understanding him day by day that he is there and that he is there to help and that he is there to support. And by the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, flowing through us, then we pray that others will see the Lord Jesus Christ and that they will see the importance of salvation in him. Then there's one more thing that I'd like us to look at, and it's this. It ends up with one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. And then if we turn back to uh, John's Gospel, chapter 1, this is what it says. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and he was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. So when the Lord Jesus Christ was with the Father in heaven, it was the creator of our world and the understanding that he is the creator and the understanding that we fell short. We, the, we were the ones that sinned and people don't like being told that they're doing things wrong. We have this, uh, this whole aura nowadays that everybody can do their own thing. And, uh, and, and we're, we're so busy around the world making laws to say you have to respect this and you have to respect that, trying to make people behave properly. But within us all is sin. And the only way to cancel out the sin is coming to the Lord Jesus Christ and saying, Please forgive me. I do repent of my sin and my understanding. And I want to walk with you day by day. I want to be like you. I want others to see that I'm like you so that one day I will be in glory with you because he is the one who gives life everlasting. If anybody has felt this morning that call to make that commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ, you can do so this morning. You can come and speak to us. You can speak to Paul, you can speak to one of the leaders, you can speak to me and we will talk you through it and we will say how much we will support you and give you that help. This way. 